The purpose of today's video is to explain more on a subject known as Fayan's Rules. In order to do that, we must start with a little bit of backstory into types of bonds found between molecules. Now, originally it was thought that there were two different types of bonds, covalent and ionic. Covalent does just what it sounds. It shares electrons between the nuclei of two atoms. While ionic, generally due to polarity or charge, one nucleus will generally pull an electron away from the nucleus of another atom. Shortly thereafter, it was discovered, though, that there were actually other types of interactions between these molecules that occurred, such as polar covalent and polarized ionic. And through Fayan's rules, we help to dictate whether each bond will display a certain characteristic of the other. Casimir Fayan was born in Poland and, in, and eventually moved to Germany, where in 1909 he got his PhD degree and stayed in Germany until the beginning of World War II and eventually moved to the States to get away from the war. However, before that, in 1923, he observed different characteristics in bonding. Fayan observed that as the cation size decreases, the tendency for the bond to be more covalent increases. This is due to the fact that as the cation becomes smaller, the ability for it to um, distort the anion is greater due to the uh, highly concentrated charge in the smaller cation. This is known as polarizing power. He also observed that as the size of the anion increases, the tendency for the bond to be covalent increases as well. This can be understood through the shielding effect within the anion. As the size increases, the shielding effect within the innermost electrons is greater for the valence electrons. Um, because of the shielding effect, the cation will be able to distort the electron cloud of the anion um, at a, with a greater magnitude than with this smaller anion, as you can kind of see in this diagram. This is known as polarizability. Okay, so we wanted to give an example about how anion size matters, and a good depiction of this is in these two similar molecules, aluminum 3 fluoride and aluminum 3 iodide. And they are, while they are similar in charge, the anion for iodine is actually significantly larger, which makes it much more covalent than the fluorine molecule. And this is depicted through the melting points of these two, where the melting point for aluminum iodide is significantly lower than the fluorine, than the aluminum fluorine. Another thing he observed is that as the charges on either the cation or the anion, or both, increases, the tendency for the bonding to be covalent increases as well. This is due to the high, this is due to the fact that as the charge becomes greater, the ability, the polarizability becomes greater as well. Okay, so through Fayan's first two uh, sections, he decided that you can judge the covalency characteristics based on size and charge of the cation or anion. So there is a determining factor if you have similar size and charge in a molecule between the cations, and that is to look at the electron configuration for each. And if you have a non-noble gas configuration, then it will lead more towards covalency than ionic bonding. In this, dem in this example, we, show, we have uh, a copper 1 plus ion and a sodium 1 plus ion, which are relatively similar in both charge and size. Now, the difference is, is that the copper ion has a D valence electron shell, while the sodium has a full S and P, which denotes uh, noble gas configuration. And we can tell that Fayan's rule in this case held true by examining the solubility properties of each. And the copper 1 plus, when reacted with sulfides and oxides, will not be soluble in water, while the sodium 1 plus ion will. 
and this is due to the covalency that copper one plus ion displays while Na one plus is more ion.